Hello and welcome. I'm Petty Officer Petrosino, and this is the Theodore Roosevelt Show. If you're tuning in for the very first time, we have a great show lined up for you. The month of February is African American History Month, and sailors aboard USS Theodore Roosevelt celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday on board, and we happen to have footage of it. Check it out. It's coming up next. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creeds. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created in holiday. He's more than a dreamer. He's more than a street name, community center, or just a statue in the nation's capital. To me, he's a person who fought for justice, fought for equality, because he believed in the ideals of America. But by the content of the character, I have a dream today. Hey, I have a dream, man. Much like Martin Luther King had. You see, it's more than about wanting greenbacks, and it's more like finding peace at last and giving back because we're free at last. Persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? We interact interdependently, and we need each other's energies. It's a fact of life. This Navy team exemplifies, amplifies, epitomizes diversity. Sharing love and peace and unity. Because true freedom starts with you and me. Master Chief Bosun's mate, Carl Brashear, was a pioneer. In 1953, Brashear would become one of the first African Americans to be designated a Navy salvage diver. Years later, his career would be in jeopardy after losing his left leg in a salvage operation accident. Refusing to give up, Brashear would be the first Navy diver to be restored to full active duty as an amputee. In 1970, Brashear became the first African American to achieve the designation of Master Diver. <sighs> The semi-annual physical fitness assessment right around the corner. Sailors much like myself are doing what they can to stay in shape. One way of doing that is by participating in one of the various courses we offer on board the ship, which we highlight in this month's edition in 71 seconds. Pretty much every class, we try to make it uh, for everybody, all 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 ranges, so uh, nobody's excluded. We've got quite a bit of master chiefs, senior chiefs. Uh, uh, we got a handful of officers that actually attend my like my morning sessions, um, spin classes. You usually got your regulars. Just walking around, you can tell the ones that have done the classes. You get the heart rate going. You're sweating. You're going to be losing the weight. Um, you know, if you stick to a, a clean diet. You, you know, the weight will definitely be, be falling off fairly quickly. The first class I attended when we went underway was the spin cycle class at, uh, at 5.30 in the morning with Lieutenant Sanifer, and that was a fun one, but I thought I wouldn't make it, but sometimes you want to quit, but you can't quit because you have other people saying, come on, you can do it, keep on, we're almost done, and PT is 
is a is a good thing and it's hard for people to stop but once you start you keep going. USS Harmon was the first Navy ship named for an African-American sailor. Commissioned in 1943, USS Harmon served throughout the Pacific during World War II. Leonard Roy Harmon, a mess attendant first class for whom the ship was named, died after deliberately exposing himself to fire to protect his shipmates. For this, he was posthumously awarded the Navy Cross. USS Harmon remained in the Navy fleet until 1967. A lot can happen on a three week long underway. Take for instance, shooting machine guns off the fantail of our ship. But USS Theodore Roosevelt sailors did just that, and I was one of them. And it was a lot of fun. We have footage of that in our next clip, coming up next. Check it out. All right, weapon is hot, all right? Pull the pin, ball yours. We conducted a small arms fire today for the security and weapons department personnel that manned the 240s and 50 cal machine guns for uh, security forces, threat con, entering and exiting port. Anytime we go in and out of port, we have to have everyone manned up, ready to go in case there's a small boat attack, uh, an aerial attack, so we're uh, ready to go at all times. We have to pre-fire all the weapons at least 24 hours in advance. We have to make sure all our ammo is ready and broke out. We usually get up early, stage everything, make sure it's on station. That way when we come home, we do a safety brief and get ready. As soon as we get the okay from the bridge, we have a hot range. Uh, we usually have cutters and stuff from the Coast Guard, small boats with us. But if something gets by them, we are the last people that will engage the target before something happens. Hello and welcome to the Serious News. My name's MCSN Lindstrom. You smell that? It smells serious. It was announced at the beginning of the most recent underway that USS Theodore Roosevelt will be switching home ports from Norfolk, Virginia to San Diego, California. Specific timelines will be announced separately, closer to the actual movements of the carriers involved. Our commanding officer, Captain Daniel Greco, flew in one of the T-45C Goshawks on this past underway and recorded his 200th trap on board Theodore Roosevelt, as well as his first as commanding officer. USS Theodore Roosevelt was greeted with inclement weather when returning north, which resulted in low visibility and two to three inches of snow on the flight deck. This is a joy for sailors that have not seen snow, but was just another sight for all the sailors to have. After ample time for snowball fights and building snowmen, all of it had to be cleared to make way for a much needed vertical replenishment. HS-11 launched their helicopters to go pick up supplies from our friends over on the USNS Kanawa. The Fitness Enhancement Program, or FEP, 
has been spending a lot of their time getting sailors up to fitness regulations according to Navy standards and getting them ready for the next PRT cycle. Sorry. Well, that concludes this edition of the Serious News. My name is MCSN Lindstrom. Thank you all for tuning in. Y'all have yourself a fine Navy day. And since Jesse Leroy Brown joined the Navy in 1946. Two years later, Brown was designated a naval aviator, making him the first Navy-trained African-American pilot. Brown would be the first African-American naval aviator to see combat when his squadron flew in support of United Nations forces during the Korean War. On December 4, 1950, Brown's F-4 Corsair was shot down while on a close air support mission. And since Jesse Leroy Brown was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, for his Korean War combat service. Well, that does it for us here on the Theodore Roosevelt Show. We hope you enjoyed watching, and thanks for tuning in. But before we go, I'd like to throw a shout-out to one of ours that's going to be leaving our command, Petty Officer Weir. Petty Officer Weir, thanks for telling me what to do every single day on this underway, and good luck to you. That's it for us here. Have a good day. All right, I'm here with Airman Davis. Airman Davis, what did you think of the snow today? I'm from Okeechobee, Florida. I've never seen snow. It's white, cold, and I think we should have a snowball fight. ABH1, how rare is it to see snow on a flight deck? Well, my 19 years in, this is the first time I've been out to sea and see snow on the flight deck. I'm here with Seaman Benavides. Seaman Benavides, what did you think of the snow today? I thought it was pretty awesome. I wanted to just run up to the flight deck and make some snow angels and throw a snowball. I've never seen snow before. I'm from Texas, San Antonio, so I don't know. I thought it was pretty exciting in my case. I'm here with AT1 Thompson. AT1, what did you think of the snow on the flight deck today? Snow? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm here with Seaman Kelly. Seaman Kelly, what did you think of the snow today? I hated it. <laughs> <laughs>